Git is a database and pretty much every single command you run in Git is just adding stuff to that database. So if you've made a commit, it doesn't matter how much you screw up afterwards, you'll be able to get that commit back. One of the most misleading things about Git is the way that certain terms feel more destructive than they really are. For example, merging, right? That sounds like you're taking two branches and mangling their contents together and warping them into something new. But you're really not. When you merge branches in Git, you're actually leaving all of the commits intact and simply creating a new commit at the top that contains the changes needed to put both branches into the same state. Git reset, that's another one. As we'll look at in a second, Git reset can sound really scary, like when you reset your phone to factory settings, you lost all your data. But again, Git reset, you don't actually lose anything, at least not until Git does a garbage collection. And the default for that is 60 days. So really don't panic. As long as you committed your work at some point, you can probably get it back. And here's how. You see, every time you commit to a branch in Git, you're adding a new commit object along this chain and the branch head gets moved to keep up with the latest commit. The branch head is basically just a tag in Git that automatically follows the commits you make when you have that branch checked out. So here, I've added two commits and the main branch head has moved up with me. Now, if I were to run git reset head tilde one, what that does is it tells git to reset the branch marker back by one commit to here. For all intents and purposes, we've undone that last commit. The files in our repository will reflect the state that they were in after that second commit. But that top commit hasn't been deleted. It's still sat there in the .git folder of your repository somewhere. And if you wanted to, you could get it back. So how do we get that back? Well, all we need is the commit hash. You see, every commit in Git has a hash. That's calculated when the Git commit is created. The hash is, for all intents and purposes, unique. And it's what guarantees this concept of immutability in Git. If two commits have the same hash, then they are the same commit. This is how Git knows what to pull and push from your remote repository. It looks at the hashes. So in this example, I've given these hashes of AAA, BBB, CCC, but in real life, they'll just be random looking strings, but let's label them like this so it's easier to explain. So if I can know the commit hash of this top commit here, the CCCCC one, if we can move the main branch back there, undoing our undo, so to speak. So how do we find the commit hashes of commits that we might have lost? Well, that's where you use git reflog. Reflog is short for reference log, and it records where your references get moved to. And by references, we mean tags and branch heads. So if we go back to our example here, our ref log, as we do this, we'll say commit A, commit B, commit C, and at this point, add a new entry into our ref log saying go back to commit B, and then go back to commit C again. Here's what the ref log might look like. As you can see, it's like an event log of all the things that we've done in Git. And in there are the commit hashes. So even if you can't see the commit hash when you do a Git log, um, and you can't see it anywhere in your IDE, VS Code or whatever, you can probably see the commit hash in your ref log. And remember, if we can find the commit hash, we can go back to it, either with Git reset or Git checkout. Remember, you can check out any commit directly in Git by doing Git checkout and then the hash. You'll have a detached head, but you can then do a git checkout b, new branch, to add a new branch tag onto that head, and you've created a new branch from that commit. Okay, I've got a short exercise for you to do that help you familiarize yourself with the ref log and resetting branches in Git. Open up a terminal, PC, Linux, Mac, doesn't matter, and create a new directory somewhere. Now in here, we're going to run git init to initialize a new git repository and then create a text file so we have some changes to commit. The commands for all of these are linked in the description below this video. Now we're going to commit this change and call it initial commit. Make two more changes by adding more text into the file. I'm using echo to add another line into the file um, and then commit those. We're going to call this second commit and third commit. Now, if we do git log, I'm actually using an alias here, which I've linked in the description as well, but that's what LG means for me. It means git log, this nice one line log. So here you can see our three commits. Also, if I run more on this text file, you can see the three lines I added. 
Next we're going to reset our main branch back to this second commit. To do that we run git reset dash dash hard and then paste the hash of that second commit like this. If we run git log again you can see that we're back to only having those two commits and a look inside our text file we can see that only those two lines we added are not all three. So it looks like we've undone that third commit. But if you run git ref log you can see the full history of what's really happened including the hash of that third commit. So now do git reset dash dash hard again but copy the commit hash of the third commit and you can see we've restored it again, right? So I really encourage you to play around with a simple local repository like this. Create branches, rebase one branch from another, try to create a merge conflict and all the time keep an eye on your ref log so that you can see those commit hashes being created and you can always use git reset to go backwards. So there we have it, a brief look at git ref log. This doesn't only help when you're using the reset command to jump about, but it's also extremely handy when rebasing. When trying to sync your local repository with a remote repository, that also comes in handy. Um, that's when you're like pulling and pushing from GitHub. There's all sorts of things that you can use your ref log to help you when you lose track of your commits. For more videos about Git and other coding topics, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one.